Anyways, hi, hello, hello, welcome, welcome everybody. Posh Gandam, hello, welcome back. People don't know about her Turkishness. It's my third language. But anyways, hi everyone, welcome back. So the way another episode of Pirates in the Caribbean podcast. I'm your host Sahara. I'm Mikran. Uh, I'm Manira. The way she says her name always distresses me. Too. Why? I'm Mikran. It's true. I am Mikran. Okay, just it to me. Ikran, not Ikran, not Ikran. It's Ikran. Yeah. Some people are like, oh, but you can use your name as an M. Ikran. That's a different name. Yeah, that's why. But then I know it's the same. Name with an M. Some people are so rude. People are rude. I was like, no, it's a crown with an N. How is everybody? How's life? How's things? Hot and flustered. Exactly. That's you took the words out of my mouth. Hot and flustered. London's not built for this heat. No. Oh, this episode is going to drop the day before Eid, inshallah. So, Eid Mubarak, yes. anybody who's listening on our Eid day. Yes. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Or anyone who's listening today on the actual Tuesday, struggling to fast. It's hot out here in these streets. Yeah. The day is much longer than Ramadan. Keep going. You've got this. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Because no, yeah, it's gonna drop on Tuesday, inshallah. Yeah. Everybody's gonna be fasting. So and it'll be Eid, inshallah. And then it will be Eid. So mm-hmm. if you're listening to us while you're getting ready with your Eid, doing your Eid makeups, mm. get ready I'm for the me- for the Eid gala. The Eid gala. <laughs> blackout Eid hashtag Blackout Eid on Twitter. Is that what you guys are going for this year? What color are you going for? You guys doing color? My husband wants us to match, but then oh. I said to him, I don't think that can work. What does that mean? If he wears a white kameez, you're going to wear a white abaya? Exactly. <laughs> and I said, you're wearing a white kameez, so I'm not going to wear a white abaya. I mean, you could do. That's a lot. Yeah. I'm not a bird. Have you ever wore a white hijab? No. Have you ever wore a white hijab? I did once, I'll never do it again. I said I to him, I can wear my nikah outfit, which wasn't a white. Oh, you can go for colour. You can go for a bright colour. That would look nice with white. Blue, grey, baby blue. Blue would be nice. Yeah. I've got so many abayas already that I don't really want to buy a new one. It's true. Well, match his thing. Is that, I got no, I'm not saying I'm that, not is, that, is that evil? Uh, no, you can get you can just wear one of your nice abides and get a new underlayer maybe. Or a new or a hijab. Yeah, that's true. I'll figure it I out. Mean, yeah. I'll figure it out. But he only made that announcement yesterday. It's a bit late. <laughs> it's a bit late in the day. Exactly. Um, <laughs> even though you, you made a point earlier when you were like, This is the only Eid that we know what day is. Yeah. I still feel unprepared. It's all right. I just anyway. Someone at work says to me, "Oh, it's Eid on Wednesday." I said, "Yeah." And then I, so does that mean I'm not allowed to put any, put any meetings in your calendars? I said, "You can do. Probably won't be there, but mm-hmm. that's right." Tied up to you when you want to do. I'm currently <laughs> anyway. My head teacher's trying to say I can't have Eid off. It's current. It's a, it's an ongoing issue. I'm not gonna. I'm on YouTube right now, so I'm not yeah. gonna go any further than that. But yeah, yeah so two years, two days of the year. Exactly. I actually went to work while I had tonsillitis. More for me. Because you don't get rewarded for actually, you know, trying your best in this life. I'm telling you. You don't, you don't. You don't don't get rewarded for it. I'm telling you. Um, But yeah. These people will put your job up before you're even in the ground. Oh yeah, 100%. They send a reef to your family. That's what I always say to my colleagues. I'm like, we can't come and die here. Mm. Because once you pop your clogs, mate. Exactly. Your job will be up on the website and they'll send some flowers to your family saying, my condolences. Exactly. If you're lucky, I mean, if you're lucky, they'll probably put you on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you're if you're lucky. lucky. <laughs> for a day. <laughs> you you raise the cart. you down. raise the cart. Yeah. 24 yeah. hours. Yeah. 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 24 hours. And then we need to advertise the some, something else coming up. Exactly. So, yeah. But That's the ones that care. Eid Mubarak anyway, guys. Yeah. Inshallah, we make it to that day. And, um, yeah. Say... It's a very special episode today, it's guys. A very special episode. episode. Call me VIP. Stop it. We have a we very, special very special guest. guest. <laughs> um, Holy lies. So, la- at the end of last week, we did ask people to leave us questions, and we said that this week's episode would be about Ikran's weight loss journey. Because mm-hmm. um, I know you've not been seeing the picture. She'd be looking mad scanty. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she's here. She's ready to talk about yeah. it. It's she's ready to lay it bare. Is on it Thursday. today? No, it's on Thursday. It's her one year anniversary on Thursday. Today, actually. Yep, so say oh. congratulations to her. 
and is our is going is, is our um, podcast anniversary uh, podcast anniversary yeah. the same day as well. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yep, literally celebrations all round. Exactly. So double one. How do you feel? How, yeah, how do you feel? How do you feel? One year on. Um, I feel good. Yeah, alhamdulillah. It's been struggles up and down. But yeah, I don't know. Like, remember last week I was saying, like, people see the change. But when I look in the mirror, I don't really see that much of a change. But overall, mm-hmm. one year on, are you glad that you did it? Yes. Okay. I am glad that I, uh, I, am glad that I did it, but... We'll get into your yeah. other... Whatever your mm, other thoughts mixed, are. Mixed feelings about it, but yes. But overall? Overall, yes, alhamdulillah. I'm glad that I did it. Like last time, remember when I was showing you guys the picture that we posted? Mm. And I couldn't believe it. And I think I showed it to you guys. Like, I'm going to lie, I don't ago. recall you looking like that. Why does everyone say I that? Know, Do you know how I many... I, was, I, I, I remember, remember that day. I, rem- you, I you remember that the picture. day. Yeah, I actually don't remember. You know who took the picture? Yeah. I literally got it from your photo album. Yeah, I uh, don't remember. WhatsApp. And because I was looking for something and I was like, oh, let me... And then I don't remember that picture. Mm. I looked at it and I was like, hold on, who's this? <laughs> I was like, I said, that's me. I said, wow. Like, you know when you actually like, I said, wow. Yeah. And I, I texted everyone. I said, why didn't anyone tell me that I looked like this? I started sending pictures to everyone. I said, guys, you know this is me? They're like, no, it's not you. I'm like, yeah, it is me. Why didn't no one tell it's me? It's weird. Like, I just don't recall having any thoughts or feelings about that. Me neither. That's um, so funny. But I guess it's not really something that you judge your friends by. No. So maybe that's why we just didn't. I told you I was care. delusional as well. I always thought I was skinny, so <laughs> my delusion. But I feel like it's me. always like it's always like that though. Like you always, there's times where you might look back on pictures, and just. Oh, trust me. Do you know what I mean? You're like, oh my god. Mm, yes. Now mm. I wish that how I I looked how I looked when I thought I was fat. She. Because there was a time, a year that you also went in, remember? Yes, yeah, Sikran. Um, Mem- distant memories now. No, it's not distant memories, come on. Um, but yeah. I, yeah, so obviously we asked people to ask questions um, and we got some questions via Instagram, our emails, etc. And obviously we're just going to throw in some other Dive questions. Dive into it. <clears throat> um, All right. So my first question for your vibes, obviously like, well, why'd you do it? What were your okay. reasons? In the in the beginning, let's start <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> um, so I did it because I lit. I didn't want I didn't want this operation at the beginning. Mm. It's only when I went to my dietitian and she suggested it, and then I was just like, no, thank you. And then she was like, just think about it, come back to me, because I think this is a good route for you to have. Because basically, I have thyroid. I thyroid problems since like 2015. I've got mine um, removed. And then since then, I've been gaining weight. Like I'll go gym, I'll exercise, I'll try to eat healthy. I remember a time when I was gym with my sister and we were working out like... I used you lost spare weight one time though. I did, but it would quickly come back on. Mm-hmm. Like it was really hard to maintain it. And then obviously when... I'm not really good with medication. I have to be now, but... With my th- if I miss like a dose of my thyroid medication one day or a few days, that's it. Like my whole th- uh, my levels would be upside down, and then I'll just get I'll put on like five kg in like what ten days. I'm not even joking. It was crazy. So my weight was always up and down, and I remember I decided to go to my GP because I I was going gym with my sister and my friends, and we was going gym eating healthy. We were taking ourselves accountable we had like a group they were going once once a once a day like to the gym like in the evening but i used to go twice i used to be so strict and i wasn't losing any of the weight but they were and i just didn't understand i was just like what's happening because i'm trying to be strict like you know and these these heifers are not i'm not even putting in half of the work that i'm putting on so I went to my GP and I just said and I just said to him listen I'm a bit worried about my weight I'll just keep putting weight on and I just don't understand why so, um, uh, is that what you were assigned with, like a dietitian? And like, yeah, so I got assigned the dietitian. First, they assign you to like weight loss programs, like Weight Watchers and stuff like that. Yeah, I Slimming went, World. Slimming World. I went, I didn't understand it, I didn't like it. I was just like, no, thank you. I tried it, it just wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. There's point things I just don't get it. I went mm. out, I'm a big believer if you just eat healthy and go gym, you'll be fine, right? 
but there's different ways of like calorie counting i think I, and that's where it's just bare calorie counting and then i was like it's not working out for me so he was when i went back to my gp he said okay so why don't you try a dietitian we we'll sign you up you can have one up to a year I said all right cool so i went to see my dietitian really nice lady me and her chit chatting she knows about my thyroid issues and she was just like okay let's try this let's, let's cut our salt and i did that for a while Try nothing was working I think like nine months into my um, the, uh, seeing the dietitian, she was like, oh, well, have you thought about weight loss surgery? I was like, mm, no. I said, weight loss surgery? I said, when you... I, I was like, no, thank you. I'm okay. I don't want it. Like, mm -hmm. it's fine. I'll continue my gym. I'll be fine, you know? And she was like, no, I think because of your thyroid, it's not really stable. You're always going to put on weight, so mm -hmm. this is your best option. Think about it. She goes, um, go think about it, discuss it with your family come back and then make a decision so i talked to him like one of my really close friends about it and i talked to my um my mom my mom was like hell no you dumb. Start, yeah she's like are you dumb she was like no just, just she was like keep going to the gym you'll be fine and eat healthy your body will catch up my friend was like you know what what have you got to lose just see what your options are mm. i said all right cool so i went back to my dietitian i said okay i was like i'm a bit hesitant but let's see in it so I went to see my consultant at my local hospital, really nice guy. And I told him I'm a bit hesitant about this operation. Like he was like looking at your medical history and stuff like that. I like that because you're a good candidate and I think it will be the best course for you. But he was like, anytime you want to stop, we can stop. It's not by force to have this surgery mm. because let's just see where it goes. I said, all right, cool. No problem. As soon as I got signed up to the program and accepted the pandemic hit. Yeah. So I couldn't like, so I was seeing my consultant like over the phone talking to mm. them, you know, and then he was always saying like try to lose weight during the pandemic, which was really hard. There was no gyms, like you know, but I still like going for walks and stuff like that. But because of my thyroid, I was still putting on a, a bit of weight, and I was just honest with my uh, consultant, and he was just like, no, let's try different things, and I think during um usually because of the uh you have like meetings you have group meetings but i couldn't have that so everything was over the phone mm -hmm. so i was always talking to my consultant about my like my issues and I, uh, I was i saw a psychiatrist over the phone asking me bare questions and i did research and that was about it took about two years remember i talked to you guys and i said guys i'm gonna i'm yeah. gonna do like a weight loss program some people had mixed feelings about it. Some people were like, like, no, Kran, you don't need to do it. Some people were like, oh, just see your options if you want to, you can do it, you know? I had mixed feelings from my friends. They were like, some people were like, my sisters were like, hell no, you don't need to. I had the, uh, um, my sibling saying, no, I feel like this is the, uh, you know, cheating, I guess, or easy way out. And I was just like, nothing about <laughs> surgery is easy. Like, do you know what I mean? And alhamdulillah one thing about me i always like consult allah for everything so i, I always played stikara during my process and i asked Ilahi, like to help me like you know mm. if this is a good decision for me like you know make it clear in it make it like uh, easy for me and my whole process was really easy every time i talk to the doctors and everything let me stop you so, <laughs> so. <laughs> sorry <laughs> so no, I'm, you know it can't tend to because i but why did you... What was the final reason why you what said... What made you go for um, it? Because obviously your doctor suggested it, but that's not the only reason you went for it because doctors say things to me or say things to us all the time. So what was the ultimate reason why you said, actually, I'm going to do this? I think, uh, I think I, like I said, after playing Stikhar and everything and talking to my family, and my, I just was like, you know what? I've had enough and I feel like... If, basically, my consultant was the one that was like, listen... You're going to lose weight. It's going to stabilize your thyroid because that's one of the things that was mm -hmm. really triggering me because I was just like, I just want to be able to lose weight normal, healthy, like normal mm -hmm. people. And he was like, no, because you, you literally don't have any thyroids and you're always going to put on weight. Mm. So I think that was the, the main reasons why I did it. I just Because you felt like it. You, you felt like it wasn't, if you didn't, then obviously the thyroid was always going to kind of dictate your weight. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that's the reason why I did it. So uh, mine was more medical reasons. And and obviously the doctor was like, oh, it's going to be a good quality of life. But I didn't even think about that. You know, my I know weight loss surgery, or you're going to lose bare weight. But 
my main thing was okay it's gonna stabilize my thyroid i'm gonna feel much better then yeah let me go for that after afterwards i thought about oh, okay i'm gonna lose yeah. weight i never really thought about that as much and what surgery did you actually have because obviously people don't know that that was another also, question as well okay so i had a gastric bypass so there's different surgeries yeah so there's like the sleeve where they cut yeah. like 80 percent of your stomach there's the balloon there's the balloon i don't think it's uh yeah it's the not, balloon's not surgical you have to swallow it yeah, yeah. i think it, and then after six months you have to get it taken out yeah and then um remove it's short term yeah yeah and then i think they had the was it the cap i don't know i'm not sure yeah. they had the but the biggest ones, the two ones that people usually have is the bypass or the uh, the sleeve. I had the gastric bypass and the re- first of all, actually the first time, when I first saw my consultant, I wanted the sleeve. Mm. I didn't want the bypass. The sleeve is where they cut off 80% yeah, of your 80% stomach. Yeah, 80% of yeah. your stomach. And then the bypass is when they still cut your stomach, but then they attach it to your small intestine. Mm. So it bypasses your other stomach that's why it's called a bypass a bypass oh, yeah yes. right that makes sense <laughs> that actually makes sense so, <laughs> never that's knew. why yeah and the reason why I had that I, uh, I, my doctor actually changed my procedure I remember that yeah it was remember like some acid thing yeah I had acid reflux and I had really bad acid reflux and the reason why actually you know through this process yeah I realised I had a loads of like I found out allergies uh, allergies I had some maybe let's not get into that because there are a couple of questions in terms of um okay yeah so th- let's say i just found out a lot of things about my health yeah 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 what happened during my, that, surge, uh, my journey through this operation yeah but yeah yeah that's okay. what so I, gastric I, so I, had, bypass. I had gastric bypass Tara, because i've asked two questions now i don't want to keep going <laughs> okay so i do have a few questions Sorry, sorry. I was just I was looking at the questions I had. Um, so, you yeah, you mentioned what surgery you had. What what were did you basically did you encounter things that you was not informed of mm. okay. about or you wasn't prepared for? Yes. So during my uh, during my so we do a lot of blood tests the doctors that take bare blood tests uh they i had a um i had a what they call it um a tube down my throat for to check like you know the, your stomach content and stuff like that remember that they were sarah came to pick me up from the hospital <laughs> yeah like that. and i found out that I had h poly so mm-hmm. h poly is a stomach bacteria mm-hmm. i had no clue i had it but looking back I should have known I had it because I remember I thought yeah that I had um, that I was allergic to like to dairy and stuff like that. Every time I used to eat pizza, I used to throw up. Mm. Every time I had like sauce things that I like very, I used to throw up. And I used to think that's it. I'm gonna like try to go like no dairy, don't have no pizza mm. or anything like that. And doctors like no, it's because you had a stomach bacteria. It's called wow. H. poly. A lot of people have it. Some people it literally they they feel bloated. They um, uh, they're always throwing up after they eat. So is this after or before? The, is this after your surgery? No, during, before, the during the process. During the process of the okay. surgery. Before they actually had surgery, like the pre... Yeah, okay. because yeah, they have to do bare checks uh, to make sure. And obviously, like, um, my again, because of my... I, I Also, I'm anemic, so my operation got cancelled. Remember when I was... when ah! She'd done that diet for how many days? <sighs> yeah. No, well, you know what I think about that day? I still get so upset. I think I cried to everyone. I was so upset because they put me on a two weeks, and uh, what was it? No food, like literally liquid diet, where I could only eat soup, and the soup was Weight Watchers low calorie soups. Is, Is that, that something you knew before you agreed to have the surgery that you were going to have to go on this two week liquid t- diet? No, he, the, my surgery. So that's my also surgery something you encountered that yeah, you weren't expecting. I was thinking like, why do I need? He was just like to shrink. Basically, you need to uh, your yeah. stomach is that is on your liver, so you have to like shrink your liver, and to shrink that you have to go on a liquid diet. Yeah. So I was just like, so what? No, two weeks of no. I was like, all right, cool, two weeks. I was like, no problem. But it's harder than you think, cause that and was And it's very hellish. specific. Items. It was very specific. I couldn't have like things. I didn't want to come out. I just didn't want to do. It. I was just like, I've had it. Like I went into deep depression. You don't even understand. So you actually thought it was a lot easier. 
Then yeah. Then what it turned then out what to it be. Was, it out. Yeah, but I did it because I had to. Or oh, my operation would have got cancelled. It got cancelled the first time because I was anemic. My doctor basically was like, "Sorry, I don't want you to die." But at least your doctor was doing the right thing. Yeah, for you, he was just like, "I'm really sorry. We'll reschedule it after." And also, I had to make sure that my thyroid levels were perfect. It was mm-hmm. just a lot of things, and um, and then he said you have acid reflux because you had the stomach bacteria. So they had to make sure that I didn't have the st- uh, the bacteria anymore. I had to do more tests, mm-hmm. and then they said that I had a. A, r- a rare blood disorder that I didn't know so my blood is A, B something <coughs> is very rare and that something to do like if I fall pregnant I have to like have this sort of injection thing it's called mm. rhesus disease I think mm. which I have no I didn't have no clue about to be honest and I was just like and I have to carry this uh, card always with me just in case if I get into an accident or anything mm-hmm. god forbid you know they know they so, can't give you certain blood yeah, certain if you blood need um, like transfusion that. yeah it was just it, I felt like it was just not one problem after the other but it was just a lot of things that I found out a about lot of myself. discovery but I, I handed it in a way that you found all of this stuff out because if you didn't go for the surgery you probably wouldn't, wouldn't know, know yeah. Yeah. that stuff even my, now yeah I was, I'll probably still have H. coli and I wouldn't even know that I've had it were any of those things a result of weight gain uh no i don't think so a lot of people see uh, the doctor said listen a lot of people are walking around with this stomach bacteria they don't even know some people don't even have signs and some people uh, it gets really bad that they'll they'll, at the end they'll see like you know they start throwing up they'll go doctors and they'll do the um they'll put the the tube down their throat and stuff Mm. like that and then they'll you know they'll just give the you, you just need really strong antibiotics like to you it could come back, so I have to do regular checks as well. Mm-hmm. After, you know, if I still, f- like, if I... Again, one of my signs was, like, I couldn't eat dairy. Anything cheese or anything like that used to make me throw up instantly, you mm-hmm. know? So he said, if you have any of those signs, just come back. We'll make we'll do another schedule and then we'll see. <coughs> I said, all right, cool. So, yeah, it was um, very enlightening, of, you know, to see that I had a few issues that I didn't know about. Obviously, everybody kind of takes their own route to, like, deciding whether or not to do something like that. Um, And I think, like, prior to having the surgery, were there any ailments that you had or issues that you had that kind of made you... What made you go to the GP in terms of, was it body pain? Were you experiencing anything negative as because of your weight? Yeah, it was... Do you know what it is, yeah? I just... Because I kept going to the gym, like I said to you, and I just kept putting on weight. I just didn't understand. I was thinking I was less bigger when I started the gym than mm. when I actually st- started the gym, if that makes sense. So I just didn't understand because I was eating healthy. I was making sure that I wasn't eating any carbs or anything like that, you know? And then it was just... And I was thinking, no, Kran, you need to, like, get it together now, you know? I'm a tall person, so people don't usually naturally see that I'm a bigger girl. Mm. But after a while... When you start seeing, actually, you're getting bigger, mm. you know, it's a problem. And I wasn't confident about... I've always been a confident person, number one. Like, my weight has never stopped me, like, from enjoying from life or something, anything. Yeah. I was always on the streets. You guys know me. You know, yeah. I didn't care. <laughs> Big or not, yeah. I was out here. Do you know what I mean? But at the same time, I did start to feel uncomfortable about myself. And then I was just like, no, I don't, I'm not happy. And I always tell, and I always used to tell people, if you're not happy about yourself, you're not a tree, do something about it. So that's why. Her favorite is you're not a tree, you know? It's true. You're not. Are you a lamppost? You are not a lamppost. So I was like, you know what, go and do something about it. So I went, I went to, I asked, I seeked help from my doctors and said, what can I do, you know? And then obviously... The two when I started doing my research about weight loss surgery, which I never knew about, I started do, going on YouTube. I watched I think like thousands of videos on like it was always Americans. I've never found anyone that like I, I found one or two UK people. I guess people don't really. But you know, UK people feel embarrassed to share their story. Americans, Americans they just do their too. Millions oh, of they're, videos. Uh, they're open. Fully, yeah, they're why not? I say. Open. Yeah. Um. So. After you, so okay, you've done the two weeks liquid diet. Mm-hmm. You've now gone through the process of having your surgery. Yep. What was the recovery like? Okay, the recovery wasn't too bad. Like I think I, I was okay. I think okay when I first opened my eyes, yeah. After my uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> when I opened my eyes, yeah, I remember screaming my mum's name, <laughs> and then the nurse came running, and I was just like, "What is?" Th-? I said, "Give me morphine now." <laughs> <laughs> I, 
it was a pain that I felt like I got stabbed. Like obviously, Allah. My, uh, by the way, um, gastric bypass is a keyhole surgery, so it's not like they cut you open or anything yeah. like that. You just have like a I've full seen pain. it on my six hundred pound. <laughs> is that full? my favorite show? <laughs> I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna. That's you don't know I've got problems. I'm not even gonna ask. Yes, I you, you, yes, you know. So yeah, I, I've ask. definitely seen how Doctor Now does the keyhole ask. surgery yeah. in the two sides, and then they yeah. move the cameras. Exactly, and they've told me about that anyway. You know, when I was going to see my consultant, yeah. they used to say to me, "This is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna <coughs> do. This is how the surgery." So I already knew what they what they did, but I really was like, "Who stabbed me?" I said, "Who stabbed?" I was telling the I'm nurse, "Morphine, please now." I was literally like crying. I'm a I'm a bit of a drama queen. You think? Uh, I think the people know. <laughs> yeah. But just so in case, I'm glad you made a disclaimer. Yeah. I was like, no, guys, I'm dying. Like, and then I call, and I was like, can you call my mom? And they said, like, let's settle you down first. And I said, no, I'll speak to my mom now. Huh? How many times did you say yes, you had? I think a few. T- you know when I was going down here, the doctor was trying to talk to me, and I said, no offense, I'm trying to tear my shahada. I ain't got time for you. <laughs> what I do I don't care you know they why try they try to, to they talk try to, to you while you're falling yeah. asleep to just calm you down no I just said to nothing they try to yeah they try to like make you feel a little bit so calm, I've got sort of serene yeah I was like I've got I've got to ask to make they, they did that the anesthesia lady young. she was like oh sick I said please sister please I don't have time for this I was like I should have done like I was like please uh, and I was just like I was, and then I remember saying please God wake me up <laughs> when I woke up I was like I'm doing that after you started screaming the hospital down. After I screamed the hospital down. I'm glad you didn't rip anything, any tubes out of your... You know some people yeah. have really bad reaction to yeah, um, waking up from anesthetic. Yeah, because they like, you know, anything could happen, like, you know, things could go wrong. You might not wake up. They'll tell you. They're, they're really realistic people, yeah, you know? they have to be. Exactly. Well, yeah, so I was just so like, you woke up like a crazy then, woman. Yeah, like then a crazy woman. How long, how long after that were you allowed to go home? Uh, I think I was there for like two days because my okay. blood pressure was really low. Okay. And they weren't happy with that, so they said until like you feel. And then they gave me bare medication. One of the nurses tried to kill me, but my friend was there. That I was like, hell no, you know, because she she didn't know, but she already some lady the other nurse gave me my medication already. She was trying to give me another medication, and I was like, no. I've already had it. Yeah, yeah but I was already like dizzy because I had so much medication. I was on morphine. But thank God my friend that was a nurse. And you hadn't eaten in probably 24 hours exactly. or more. Exactly. And they give you like water and you can only have liquid. And every and every medication I had, it had to be either like crushed or it used to be like mm. a liquid. Yeah. And again, after my um, surgery, you need to be on, a, on another two weeks liquid diet, by the way. So basically, I was on a liquid diet for a month. Yeah. Really and truly, for a yeah. month I was on a liquid diet. Um could not chew food. I was thinking, oh my God, I think I, I forgot. Like one of my biggest fears was that when I started eating again, like I, I actually had high anxiety about eating food and thinking that it was going to like, I was going to choke. Because I was like, I can't remember oh, I how to chew. Yeah. I literally was like, I can't remember how to chew. And I was like, why does the food get stuck in my throat? I was very apprehensive about eating. Literally. Wow. Very apprehensive about eating. So when you went home, could you like sit up could you yeah, walk around yeah like, what's, I could walk around it wasn't literally like I think like after like a week I was fine two days I was in pain but I had loads of pain medication I just made sure because anyone that knows me knows that I don't have high pain tolerance like I, my t- pain tolerance is very low I paper cut and I'm on the floor so imagine surgery I was like so my mom every 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 four hours she'd be like, before we get to the four hours, let's give her medication. Yeah, because, because we don't want to hear it basically. And yeah, I was like, I don't hear this girl crying because I'm, like, I'm so Did you have so did you have any any did you have any expectations coming out of that surgery? And what was you like in terms of results? Was you expecting something soon? Did you think you know? Things will move quickly. Like, what was your expectation? No, I knew I was gonna uh, lose weight, uh, uh, because obviously I basically haven't eaten. But I didn't. Ha- I just my main thing was just get better, just feel yeah. like yourself again. Because I feel like for a good, maybe like three months, I didn't feel like myself at all. I felt dizzy. I was always tired. I just wasn't. I just wasn't myself. I couldn't do things like you know. I was always low in energy. And my doctors did tell me, you're going to feel like that, you know, but gradually as you start eating, you get more energy. You have to, I can't stand protein shakes. I still take them till this day, but that was my life for like a month. Like, you know, 
So no, I didn't have no expect uh, expectation. I did, but I knew I was gonna lose weight. But it wasn't. I just, I wasn't thinking. Oh my god, yeah. In six months time, I'm gonna look like this or something like that. It, that wasn't in my mind. My mind was always like, take step by step, day by day. See how you feel. You just yeah. wanna be yourself. Like you know, you wanna feel energetic. You wanna be calm. You know, you wanna yeah. do things. You wanna yeah you know, be out on these streets again. You know. Did you? So obviously, like. Prior to the surgery, they gave you lots of support. You got to speak to a psychotherapist, a dietitian, or this or that. Yeah. So now that you've had you'd had the surgery, what was the post surgery support like? Okay, so I still see my I still see a dietitian every few months, and I see my consultant every like six months. So I'm I'm on the NHS uh, um, a program for yeah. weight loss surgery, and so it's a two year. So they will keep me up. Uh, they will keep me in their program for two years. Mm-hmm. So every few months I go see. They take my blood test. Uh, they if they see that I have to be on vitamins, that's why I'm always like talking about vitamins because. Yes, I remember bringing I, you some from Turkey. Yeah, remember as I. You didn't know it was an injection. Alhamdulillah for nurses in my family. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was just like a lot of uh, a lot of things like that. I, I that I had to think about, you know. So. Sorry. So they kept you with a consultant and a dietitian, but okay. So the psychotherapist part stopped. No, it stopped. I, um, my dietitian, I could talk to him. He's like, anytime you have yeah. any problems, any worries, especially when I first had my surgery, I was on the phone to that man every day. He had enough of me. He said, please stop calling me. I said, no. I will call you every but, day. But, but, but kind of, what kind of like... Like questions, I would ask him silly questions like, him. oh my God, can I have the, this protein shake? The conversation shake that you would have with a dietitian would be, would be different. It was all about food. The conversation you yeah. have with... So, all about food, basically. Yeah, it was all yeah. about food. My dietitian was all about food, what I can eat. Um, he, I was just like, this. he was like, this food made me feel a bit funny. I'm not sure about this. I would just ask him, like, every question that I had, because I wasn't sure, you know? And I was like, and after this protein shake, and I think there was one time I was drinking this protein shake, and it was, like, too sugary, and I could feel it, because I kept getting dizzy and stuff, like, you know, like, when you know you have, like, high sugar, mm-hmm. and it was, like, drop that. And I had a lot of stools. So stools is like when you lose weight and then when you you stop losing weight, basically. Mm-hmm. For maybe sometimes some of my stools are like a few weeks. Some of them are a few months, you know. Mm-hmm. And they told me anyway, you're going you're gonna to stool. So it's fine. Just try to like change. Do something different yeah, to kind ch- of yeah, kick like start maybe, it again. Yeah, exactly. Did they mention that? Did they say that to you before or after the set? Was before. That before? I, I knew all of this. Like there was... A, he was like... Um, and also remember... Because we were in the pandemic, even though I was seeing my on the phone, I did a lot of research. I was mm. researching about this um, surgery, a lot of things that people don't tell you is like you have like hair loss. Mm-hmm. So, you know guys had a lot of hair. My mm-hmm. hair like, was like a maze. Now mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, it's, actually, now you're being hair. very dramatic. I saw your hair last week. No, no, yeah, but yeah, compared yeah, to what yeah, I had yeah. before... Compared to what I had it's before, coming back. I had, it's coming back. Yeah, it's coming back now because obviously it's been like a year post up, but my hair was like proper shedding a lot. Yeah, so hair shedding. Hair shedding. What else? Um, you can't eat and drink at the same time. So they'll mm-hmm. tell you they're like that you have to space out your meal. So you have to eat first mm-hmm. and then wait half an hour and then drink water or juice or anything like that, whatever, you, whatever you're drinking. So you have to do that. And that was really hard because I'm, I'm the type of person that used to eat and drink at the same time. I yeah. found that really hard. But I was just like... But one day I tried and then what happened? I was on the floor crying. <laughs> so I never did it again. I was just like, okay, yeah, no, I can't. Um, I think one of the side effects that I have is that I have nausea. Like you mm-hmm. guys see every time I eat, like I can't, I have to lay down. Or I have to always have chewing gum with me or mint or something to make me uh, uh, feel better. Was you was you made sorry, was you told in depth prior to your surgery in terms of, you know, when you eat and then you feel nausea, what the results of that could be, why you why you might potentially feel like that? Was it was it told to you in a way where you can only eat a certain amount of food or if you don't, then it would lead to this, or yeah, was that just something that you kind of ended up, kind of picking up on. Um, no, my my doctors did tell me like you you're gonna know when you cannot eat no more because your your stomach starts hurting or some people like get like hot flashes like everyone's different. Have you experienced also, all of those? Yeah, I've experienced all. Remember when I start sweating? 
when I eat it, and I start, and I was like, why am I sweating? It's because that's it. And it's so funny. People say to me, Karen, you haven't eaten anything. You had like two spoons. Like, what do you mean? Like, you know? And even sometimes I'm like, wow, it's true. I've only had two spoons and then I'm full, you know? Mm-hmm. And then two hours later, I'll get hungry. But yes, the, my doctors did tell me you're going to experience different symptoms and stuff. However, I did my own research. Like, I was on TikTok. I was on um, YouTube watching videos. So a lot of people did say these symptoms, this is what's going to happen to you. Mm-hmm. This is what I've experienced. I was watching, like, loads of vlogs with people, like, saying, like, you know, I had hair shed. I can't eat as much. People had, like, dumping um, uh, sim- uh, symptoms. And I, I've experienced that one time. So, what's dumping symptoms? So basically is when you eat, and you and and maybe you, you're overeating and you're and you you basically your body starts to like reject the food so you either have to throw up because I had the bypass for me it's really hard to throw up I can't I actually can't throw up mm. it's really hard for me and then I remember one time why did I have some calamari and then ten minutes later I'm on the floor about to call nine 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 because I it was feel fried. like. I felt like someone stabbed me in my stomach. I felt like, oh my God, I have, like, I've literally damaged my stomach. Yeah. It's like one calamari. Why did I have it? Because another symptoms that I had, and remember, everyone's symptoms is different, by the way. Some people can't drink cold water. Some people, they feel nausea just by drinking water. Um, But for me, it was more of, like, once I experienced, the dumping one was, like, I, I started, like, sweating, I was on the floor. I felt like I was going to... I literally felt like I was having symptoms of heart attack. I was yeah. literally this close. I can't even laugh. To call 99. I was like, I'm calling 99 because I can't. I can't. Was you told about do's and don'ts? Yeah, like, I was know, told do's and don'ts. After you have surgery, there's certain foods that you should avoid. Yes. And did you pay attention? Did you actually time? follow them? No, I didn't follow them all. I'm not going to lie to you. But then what happens when I don't follow them? The, my, the consequences come to you real quick. Right. And that's like a... That, so... Obviously, one of the concerns that I always raised with you from the beginning was that the, the surgery helps you drop weight, mm-hmm. right? But obviously, the downside, the, the, one of the concerns with all these kind of surgeries is that you can undo it, and I know that because of my six hundred pound life candidate. Yeah, <laughs> you can like eat it back out basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and my concern always was is that how do they help people deal with their relationship with food? Because if you've cut your stomach, right, to a certain point, and that's great, and technically you can't eat past a certain amount, as you and probably every other person who's had the surgery, Mm -hmm. you ate more than you should have, and Mm -hmm. it made you feel ill. Yeah. Right? So how do they support people with that? Because, yes, you can cut me, and that's great. But if I am going to eat too much... Somebody needs to help me with that. Yeah. So how did they help you? I think that's why you have your dietitian that you speak to about. Okay. And they say to you, um, they do have classes as well. Well, before pre-pandemic, my hospital, they used to have classes, but mm. they stopped the classes. And they never brought it back. And they never brought it back. Because I asked them, like, okay, so the aftercare. But I really have, like, a doctor, my consultant, and my dietitian that, like, call us anytime. If you have any issues, we'll help you, you know, to make sure that... Um, it would have been nice for you to have a community though. Yeah, people would have had it done as well. And and that's another reason why I made a TikTok for my um, my own personal TikTok. It's called Doctor Blackstar. Follow me, guys. Where I opened about my surgery, and it was because when yes, I had you guys. But we don't know how it feels. Yeah, I just didn't have a community of people like me. I'm really sorry, but all the YouTube channels I w- watched was just white women. I uh... cannot relate to them. I c- Literally, That's I think I saw one or two black. Um, you know, black people are like, I ain't talking my business in public. Exactly, but also I never saw any Muslim women talking about it uh-huh. at, all, at all. It's different. Yeah. I'm, I'm black. I'm Muslim. Do you know what I mean? I'm. A, I just didn't relate. I was thinking like. And also, you I can't speak to them. Yeah, they're speaking to you, but then after that, the conversation's over. Yeah, I was just like, I don't. I don't know. I wish like I could talk to you guys. I'm like, guys, I'm feeling like this yeah, today. Yeah, we like, don't get it. 100%. It just wasn't the same. Like mm-hmm. I was like. I wonder if there's a, a group or community out there mm-hmm. that did the same thing as me. So me, I was like, let, let me, me make put it community. out there. Let me make my own community. And once I did that and I opened my TikTok, do you know how many messages I got from Somali girls, Muslim women, that have actually was like, oh my God, I did this surgery. Yeah, I did, but nobody knows that I did it. Like, you know? And I was like, okay, that's fine. I know people like that. 
Yeah. Where nobody knows they've had the surgery. They've never had the surgery. And they were like, do you know how much I want to talk to someone about it and let them know how I'm feeling? And they literally went through what I went through. Yeah. But they didn't have anyone to talk to, like me. Like, you know? But imagine literally nobody knowing. That's That mad. you went through. Me, yeah. I was... Me, I, you guys know me. I'm an open book. I was very vocal. I was like, yeah. guys, I'm doing this. I need support. Do you know what I mean? I could talk to my friends and let them know. But like I said, the community that... I got and the sister saying and everyone sharing like or oh, eat this or eat that or like you know let's support each other if you feel an emotion and I always tell people Alhamdulillah one of the 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 consultant was like when I was doing my uh, consultation to see if I'm okay for the surgery was like you have to be a good mindset like you know you mm-hmm. have to make sure that you know what you're eating. And I've been battling with the exercising and gym for a long time. To the point I feel like I can be an expert in nutrition at the moment, you know? I know what I need to eat. I know what's good for me. Yes. But it's the actual I, doing it part. Actual doing it and indulging in it. And it's nice to have that community. So that's the reason that I opened up my TikTok as well to you. Do, do you think, prior to the surgery, did you have a... Because I know you mentioned you, you, know, you was having consultation with your doctors and your dietitian regarding food and and actual surgery and the procedure and etc did you was you ever given someone to speak to regarding your mental health regarding how you would feel emotionally prior to the surgery and kind of like how to kind of deal with certain you know things that might come up or how to deal with it overall emotionally because it's a lot yeah emotionally it It is is a a lot lot for you to go on the do you know what I mean? Under the knife mm-hmm. and to have surgery. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot to take on. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, you don't know what what's on the other side. Yeah. In terms of whether you have expectations or whether you don't, whether you think, you know, you're going to have a good relationship with food, whether you're going to, you know, however you're going to deal with it, you never really know. Yeah. Or how it might affect you. Again, because uh, my whole operation and my journey was through... During the pandemic, no, I didn't have... Uh, I just had, like, that, my consultation with my doctors. But they were very open, like, if you have any emotional needs or you you need to know something, let us know. But no, I didn't. My main support, like I said, it was just to go friends. on YouTube mm-hmm. and friends and see, like, you know, this is how you might be feeling. And the funny thing is, yeah, the amount of research that I did compared to what I actually felt afterwards was, com- was opposite. I... Th- every... All the videos I watched on YouTube and TikTok, I had a completely different experience. That's the thing, though. I was just about to say as well. Do you think watching all those videos and having to teach yourself or having to research certain things actually helps? Because there's only so much that it can do for you, right? Yeah. Whether it's... It, it can't... I don't know. Maybe everyone's different. Emotionally, if you're going through something, you can research something. You can watch a YouTube vi- mm-hmm. video. But like you said... Everyone's, everyone's um, experience is different, right? Yeah. So, having done all that research, did that actually help you? Did it actually meet your expectations? Like, was it you what you were expecting? No, it wasn't. Because, li- like I said, I did so much research. I was like, yeah, okay, I know I'm going to have hair loss, you know? I'll be able to deal with it. It's fine. Uh, if I... The, the, uh, they were giving tips like, you know, make sure you take your vitamins, yeah. have your air... Uh, you know, put uh, oil in your hair, blah, blah, blah. But when I actually went through it, I felt emo- I felt emotionally drained about it. I was really upset. Like, I felt like to the point I was just like, this is not it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're not gonna, you can't prepare yourself for how you're going to feel. You might know something's going to happen, but you don't know how you're going to feel about it until it happens. Exactly. Like, there was a few things that I think I even had, like, a book when I wrote a lot of things like, yeah, this is how you're going to, this is how you're going to, this is what's going to happen to you, and then this is how you can fix it. Mm. But when you're actually doing it, because remember, you're also emotional about it, like mm-hmm. sometimes when I eat uh, food and I feel sick afterwards, I, I I do think to myself like, why it can like mm. do you know what I mean? Why did you like I do have you get to get annoyed of yourself? Yeah, and I'm and I instantly be like, is this life like? Is this how I'm gonna continue to be like forever? Like I'm gonna eat food and I'm just gonna uh, instantly for and it only lasts like my nausea, me feeling sick, need to lay down is like half an hour, but that's a lot emotionally. Especially for if you're in public. Hour exactly you're going through a lot and you guys see me in public i have to shut down i have to be quiet i'm like i'm trying to not throw up so i'm just trying to go th- doing breathing exercises and not try to you know be a lot emotional because it's a lot because i'm feeling mm. like because I was, I was telling one of my friends she's like it sounds like you know you when you go through you know when you're pregnant and you and you uh have like loads of pregnant symptoms it's not nice you know yeah so that's how i feel majority of the time you know 
So no, I don't think emotionally I was prepared for what I was gonna go through, but I just learned now just to be like. You I know. mean, yeah, it's a year down the line, isn't it? So I guess. Yeah, you have, you know. So I just have to be now. Is like like I said, if I eat something and I know it's gonna hurt my stomach, I'm, I I tend to avoid it because. I went through it before and I know how it made me feel like, you know? Yeah. I don't like having nausea, but unfortunately, that's one of the symptoms that have stuck with me a year the down time. the line. Yeah. Um, I've got a question before I just read her comment. This is quite sweet. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, girls. First and foremost, I would like to tell you all that I love listening to you lots. Three amazing black women that I view as big sisters. Because we're aunties. <laughs> <laughs> May Allah put only khair and barakah in your lives. Amen. I mean. I thought that was quite sweet. Um, so she said, Congratulations to Ikran on your weight loss. You look stunning. Allahumma barak. You also look stunning before your surgery. Thank Her you. question is So she's studying physiotherapy. Okay. And she wants to know if you experience any pains in your joints before the weight loss, such as your knees and ankles. And if so, has the pain reduced now that you've lost weight? You know, that's so funny, yes. Because now, I can walk up the stairs. I used to have, like, uh, obviously me, the majority of, of my weight uh, gain was always on my stomach. Mm-hmm. So my legs were carrying the majority of my weight. So, yeah, I used to have, like, knee pains and everything. Mm-hmm. But, yes, yeah, since I've lost the weight, I don't feel that. Even, like, walking on heels, guys. I could not walk on heels for two seconds because I couldn't carry it. Now, when I walk on heels, I can walk on heels for, like, more than, like, an hour before I've she making progress y'all I've made progress so yes definitely I can walk up the stairs more now without, without feeling like, out of breath without my legs hurting me so yes I definitely feel like the more I've lost weight the more my joints have become a bit more free I would say because oh, I'm not carrying the, the weight as much you know what would you say like if I would say to you okay your biggest benefit from doing this surgery what is it I think my biggest benefit from this is just seeing that I'm a I'm more healthier now. Like I can I can go to the park and run with my son. Honestly, mm. like you know If I say that like that's his six. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, I know. We, we go to the but park. I just pictured him, that's why. <laughs> yeah, he's a big boy now, but sometimes they like he used to say to me, especially summertime, he'd yeah. be like, Mom, come to the park and I'd be like, No. Because like yeah. by the time I walk to the park, I'm back, I'm tired, I can't, yeah. like, you know. Now I'm like, yeah, let's go, like, you know. Yeah. We can walk up the hill together, Yeah. you know. Um, we don't have to take the bus. I, I remember times where, like, because we live up on a hill. Yeah. And we'll be like, let's just walk in. I'll be like, no, I'm taking the bus, even if it's two stops, I don't care. Like, yeah. Because you know? I'll, be, I'll be tired and out of breath. But now you feel the, But now like I can do a lot of things with him. him, you know. And he sees it, he's like, oh my God, yo. He, and he always says to me... You look, you look so much better. Like, you know, we do more things together now, you know? Aww, we walk p- p- more places so together. Sweet. Yeah, like, I feel like I've benefited, like, health-wise a lot that I feel more... Like, I'm not out of breath. Guys, like, you know when we used to do this, uh, the podcast, like, from season one, uh, I remember, like, you know when we were speaking, I always, like, the mic, I could always hear, like, me out of breath. <laughs> Really? Yes. Breathing. Like my breathing was, I was always out of breath. And it used to annoy time. me. I remember you mentioned oh. it last time. Remember, oh. I was I like, literally, literally. It's mad how you proper don't notice things. Yeah. Like I, I didn't know it until she mentioned it to so me. So you'd be on the mat. Yeah, and, yeah, and I can feel like it. I'm just talking and I'm out of breath. And Damn, I, and Daniel. I'm just like, yeah. I'm out of breath, like, you know? But now, I'm not out of breath. I can walk longer, you know? Mm-hmm. I can do things without... Um, last time I remember my mum's lift uh, was broken and I was walking up the stairs and I got to the fourth floor and I was not out of breath and I was like wow yeah <laughs> I said why am I not out of breath like I literally shocked myself I was like why yeah. am I not out of breath I was like this was easy before first step I have to take 10 minute break second I have to take another 10 minute break uh, and I, by, the t- by the time I get to the fourth floor I'm 40 minutes down wow do you know what I mean if you could go back before the procedure What's one crucial thing you will do different? Um, I, w- I, don't, I don't think I would do anything different. I think I would just be like... Rem- I would take it a bit more serious that this is life-changing because this mm. has changed. It is life-changing. I thought, oh, wait, Lassa, it's fine. Like, you know, I'll just, I'm just going to eat smaller now. That's it. Yeah. You know? It's much more. It's mentally... 
especially when you are you're not feeling well and you start eating and you know that like when we go to a restaurant guys i'm literally battling in my mind i'm like i can't but you're yes. actually delusional sometimes. Like you order things and it's like yeah, because you know she she you know she ain't gonna finish. Like, I'm never gonna finish. Do you remember it? we had to battle for you to order from the kids menu? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they said no, and her. I was like, but we shouldn't be wasting food. And she ain't gonna eat it. And I I say to the and I'm like and I always take away. Remember I always take everything. Take yeah, away. she's a takeaway queen now. I I, li- I legit have like five bites. Donkey bag car. queen. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Literally like five. Uh, five bites so I have to wait and then but my other problem is that because I eat so little after two hours I get hungry again like I've, I'm starving like so I'm not eating so they take the container and just yeah I just li- eat a couple more apples yeah I take my container when I get hungry I open that container and I eat a little bit and I put it down and I literally I can I can have a takeaway and that can last me for like two days you know yeah literally two days so you would you would have I would say take it more seriously. If I could go back, I'd say to you, can I take it more seriously? It's going to be life-changing. Your life is not going to be the same. Mm-hmm. There's, so, yes, there's going to be lots of benefits, but there's also a lot of... Uh, there's going to be a lot challenges, of, like, yeah. challenges and things that, like, you might not be ready for. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because the, uh, things like eating and drinking, it took me a long time to, you know, get over that. But I had to. I, I couldn't do it. Is that or, forever or is that... Yeah. Mm. It's something that I have to do, like, you know, make sure that you eat healthy enough. Like, things like, I can't eat fried food. Like, fried, uh, if I eat anything that's really oily or fried food, I instantly start feeling sick. I can't do that, you know? But obviously, now, like, before, I could only have three bites of food and fine. Yeah. Year down the line, I can do about six, you know? My tolerance is still high, but I know that over the years, is going to... You. Uh, get more you know I yeah. can make, take more bites to the point the doctor said this is by the way he said this surgery is not it's not like yeah you're gonna eat small forever no he said it's a tool like exercise is a tool like eating healthy is a tool this is just a tool that's gonna help you so that's why my dietitian always says to me make sure that you make right choices that you know and he always says to me have your ice cream like you know have your chocolate if you want to but you can't indulge in it like how you used to before you know you have to and be a bit more careful that's another question i had have like did you have to like how has it changed your relationship with food like did you have to mourn your relationship with food because you can't eat what you want to eat of course and even when you can eat what you want to eat you can eat little two bit. bites of it yeah so how did that make you feel a lot of learning had to go into the this process i felt like i was like okay like i mean like i said i tried you know me i'm a bit stubborn but then what happens i get sick and i said okay yeah. i can't do it again you know so i had to learn to be like i make right choices you know you don't want to feel nauseous you don't want to feel sick all the mm-hmm. time i, I can't because mentally it's draining on you you know when you're every time you eat food you feel depressed. What's the point? You feel like because I guess you feel angry with yourself that you've yeah. done something that you know you shouldn't have done. Yeah, you yeah. feel like the it's joys kind of, of life, like you know, just eating, is taken away from you. That's yeah. how I honestly yeah. feel about it. Sometimes that's like, what I'm saying because you know? most hard. people, you know, you p- people love food, right? People yeah. connect over yeah. food. Yeah. Even like Ramadan, for example, we connect over food at the end of the day, and you know, everybody eats together, yeah. and you know, or even socially, especially as Muslims, because we don't club and all that kind of stuff, a lot of our socialising is around food. Exactly. So obviously, you having that and not being able to really indulge in that... It's very depressing. Obviously, it's not like you come to the table and not eat. I do, but... but you come I to the table and you can't really eat, eat that as much. much. Like, before, I used to try, and then what happens, I can you never feel eat sick. Than, Yeah, I feel sick. So now, I've just learned, you know what, Ikran? This is the way of life. You chose this path, stick to it, sister. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just have to make sure, yes... It is sometimes where you, like, oh, my God, look at all this nice food and I can't eat all of it, you know? Mm. But it is what it is. This is the life that I chose, do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And it's fine, but it's just something that I have to le- li- live with. And that's why I said, I will, if I if I was to go back, I would say to myself... Take it seriously. Take it seriously. It's like life changing. changing. Life changing. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like take it seriously. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the most commonly asked questions, obviously... Uh, about how much you weighed before and how much you weigh now obviously it's up to you if you want to answer that question or how you want to go about answering it but obviously yeah that's like the main thing how much weight have you lost how much did you weigh how much do you weigh now so i was like uh you know when i started uh my surgery and you know i was, I was at like 148 kg i know 
I didn't. I don't even know what that is. I'm gonna have to Google it. I, for some reason, I do stones. Oh, I do yeah, KG. I do KG. So basically, I'm lost. when you were saying KG, I'm not gonna lie, I was Googling it. Yeah. I do KG. Yeah, I'm, go on. I'm 110 now, so I've lost about 38 KG. And um, because of my thyroid, actually, my weight. Shut the hell up, bro. You weren't no. 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 Well, like I want I you to go back to the original documentation. I do. I have it on my notes. 148 kg. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when I first started. That's 23 stones. Yeah, that's impossible. Well, like it's because I'm tall, so people. That's true. That. What are you? Five ten? Five eleven? Five ten? Yeah, about well, I was five ten, but people always think I look taller. But I am five ten. Yeah, that is tall, mashallah. Yeah, so you wouldn't think. Imagine that I you were short. That. Bismillah, Miss oh, sure. you would have been finished. I'll be on the floor. No one could get drag me. They'll have to put me <laughs> yeah. on the table and just drag me everywhere. Yeah. But that's when I was just like, 148 kg. Yeah. And Babes, now I'm I would never have. You know, I would never put that on you. Yeah. But if you only look back pictures and stuff like you can yeah, see. Yeah, but you didn't look like that. My eyeball wasn't seeing that. Yeah, it's because you see me all the time. And you know what as well? You've always had a slim face. Yeah, that's the thing. I've always had a slim yeah. face. Yeah. This is one of my things. I've never yeah, had. Yeah, you've always people that had a happy. slim face. But Not that I couldn't see the rest of you, but I just, I think as girls, I just don't think we look at stuff like that with our friends. Yeah, it's true. So now I'm 110 kg and I've got, I and I want to get to 85 my mom thinks is that's too that's that I'm gonna be way too skinny. But well, I guess you have to see how you how like each time each five kg you lose, you can look at yourself and say, hmm, how do I feel? Yeah, like this? and my doctor said my weight loss is slow, but I love it to be slow because obviously, like you know, the the more quicker you lose weight, the more you have loose skin and stuff. And again, loose skin is something that I am okay with. You know, I rather. Loose Are you going to keep the loose skin or do you think you're going to have an operation to remove no, it? No, I think I'll point? have an operation to, to, to take it off, but that's not something So I guess you have like a, do you have like a goal weight where you would say, okay, now I'm going to reduce Yeah, so once skin. I get to like maybe 85 kg, then yeah, and then I have to maintain it. So that's why like before, I'm not going to lie, it took me a while because imagine you go through surgery, you're, you're always low energy. You, you can't bring yourself to go to the gym. After a while, I think about five, six months, I was like, go to the gym, Ikran. But I was always feeling tired. Mm-hmm. Um, my thyroid levels like were down. Uh, the doctor's always changing my medication. You still have to take medication for your thyroid. But Damn. that's another thing. You know, my, I used to take really high dosage of uh, medication, but now it's reduced. Okay, like, so you're I, still on it, but they've had to take it. They've they taken have to it take down. it down because I've lost a lot of weight. Uh, they they've taken it down, which is good. He said that's good for you. So the more you take it down, the less thing, the, the more you lose weight, the less medication you need. Obviously, you have no thyroid. Yeah, like mine's removed. Yeah. Because some people have underactive, un, uh, uh, yeah. hyperactive, right? Yeah. So you have none. Yeah. So does that mean that but mine's regardless? Mine's still underactive. Mine's underactive. Oh, okay. Mine's always going to be underactive because I. But if they took it out, so does this mean like? Because mm. I don't even know what a thyroid is. Um, your gland, your, yeah, your leg, like a but like if they've there. removed it from you, yeah, does that mean that regardless of the surgery, you are gonna still have to take medication for Forever, life? Forever, yeah, just less. Yeah, just less. I used to be really. You'd always be on thyroid medication. I always be on My friend don't take medication. his. He did his. He's controlled his thyroid through diet, although that is a risk. Yeah, but he doesn't take his he's medication. Dying. He must be pretty strict. He must be. Really but mine's like used I used to CMOS a lot, to con- but his was I, overactive, not underactive. Yeah, see, mine's underactive, and when yeah. you take CMOS, it's it, uh, if you if you're underactive, it can affect you. Yeah. So there's a lot of research into it. Um, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought. I but, lost my train of thought. Uh, my yeah, train so of thought right now is no, food. the my my medication has gone down. I yes. couldn't go gym like all the time. So now I'm. Uh, Another thing I was worried about that they said you can't fast Ramadan, but Alhamdulillah, with the will of Allah, you fasted, fasted this Ramadan. I was fine. Oh. Alhamdulillah, it didn't. Uh, it helped that I was uh, two weeks in Umrah, that the times were short. But yeah. I didn't have no problems because I'm guessing you lost weight. Yeah, I lost that four kg in, in Ramadan. Uh, yeah, I was only there for like ten days, and my doctors did say, and my dietitian were like, we'd advise you not to fast because your stomach is already small. You're fasting for many hours. It's going to get smaller. You're not going to able to take food or water, you know? You might get more sicker. Yeah. That was the risk. But I said, God's got me. Sorry, I'm fasting. I fasted. Alhamdulillah, I had no problem. Are you happy with your, your progress? 
Um, I could do better. I'm not gonna lie, but I know it's because of my thyroid. I've got like you know, my, like my doctor was like, your weight loss is slow, but as long as you're losing weight and you're doing things that you need to do, is fine. Because uh, even though I lost thirty eight kg, usually with people that have had surgery like mine, by now they've lost like forty, fifty kg within a year. Right. Some people even lose more than that, you know. But I have a man's really slow. Which is fine. I'm actually, yeah. And I, I guess am because at the beginning you were struggling with certain things as well with regards to food, the food and yeah, it's whatever. Just it's like a process, isn't it? People yeah, think, because I used to see people be like, oh, like again, some of these YouTube uh, channels are a bit unrealistic. One thing that I found out was like, someone was like, after six weeks of surgery, she went gym. After six weeks of my surgery, I still couldn't lift my fingers. I was still tired, like... But that's... Yeah, everyone's different. Everyone was different. different. I couldn't. I think it took me around five, six months to go gym. And even then, it was, like, really light. Now I'm going gym more often. Now I feel, like, a bit better myself. Now I, I have built control over... The, yeah. After a year, but I still, you still got I guess you were still kind of testing the waters with food after yeah. your surgery. You were yeah. still testing the waters with food after your surgery. So you It's like a long really, process. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to advise people that if they are thinking you know the, um advise people that if they want to do this lo- weight loss surgery really think about it mm-hmm. if you're healthy and you're fine please go to the gym and try to exercise yes if you i'm not going to tell people what you can't or cannot do with your life but just know that it's a major life change oh, yeah. it's not no quick fix it's yeah. not a quick fix you think you if you think oh my god yeah i'm just gonna get skin yes you will lose weight but you think you know i'm just gonna eat little bit of food and then that's it it's fine you know i'm gonna be a, on a calorie deficit for life which it is kind of <laughs> like that but at the same time it's a it's a lot of emotional like it, it's it's hard like it's really hard like you know I always, when people always ask me like oh would you advise anyone to have this surgery i always have mixed feelings about it i'm always like if you are healthy i always say to them like what's making you stop losing weight it depends know? on your reasons basically yeah if it's like medical reason like you know people have pcos and they need this extra help okay fine but do your research even yeah. then because you might not be able to handle it there's look lo- i'm on like on a facebook group uh support group and some people instantly have regrets some yeah. people are like i wish i I'd never done, done this surgery yeah. i wish i did more research like you know yeah I, if i could go back i would just eat healthy and fight my PCOS or you know yeah. try to do better because this is not life like some people get really really depressed about it wow. so if you're not a person that can handle and I've had two years to like research and really think about it anytime uh, my surgeon was like you can stop it you know but yeah. I, was made du'a, I was firm on it but even after that I still felt whoa Ikran like you know yeah. are you sure about this like you've done it now do you, do you have regrets? Yes. Sometimes, like I said, when I eat food, yeah, I cry and I'm like, why did I do this surgery? Like you know, and then I feel better and I'm like, hmm. and then I and then I get really like I had uh, not a bad day, but I just get really moody and stuff like yeah. that. You, it's not easy. Your emotions go up and down. Like, yeah, of you know? course. Because you're not gonna enjoy food like you used to. I'll tell you that for free. Yeah. Before we close off, if people wanna ask you more questions about this or where can what just tell them what your personal tiktok was again yeah my tiktok is dr blackstar dr blackstar all things weight loss surgery yeah don't bombard her please yeah no i've, I've um, had so many uh, girls messaging me that we always like that was you before know. you said on the podcast it's gonna be even more now i know right um, yeah, follow me we can talk about it and we can do like a support group because i believe it's important to have especially if you're like a black muslim woman you know because oh, there there's, you not go. A lot, there's not Something a lot of support start. like that I'm telling you um, and, well yeah thank you for being so open and honest yeah. and for indulging us yeah. and our listeners in there in the questions oh, and wow. um, do, you have, do you have any more you want to no? do you have any questions no <laughs> um, yeah so thanks Ikran and oh, yeah we pirates. have been pirates and a Caribbean Thank you guys, thank you for listening to my story. <laughs> <laughs>